Hey everyone, so there's another thing that we need to talk about with energy. Now, for the most part, the conservation of energy concept, as I said, is definitely the biggest part. Uh, it's the toughest part. The next two things that we need to talk about are pretty much, again, left as plug and chug type things. But one of them is uh, the concept of power. Now, you've probably learned about power, heard about power, but we want to talk about what it means in this class, any scientific case. Now, the good thing is that power is represented by the symbol P, unlike some of the other units that you've seen. Uh, but don't get this confused with lowercase p for momentum. Capital P, lowercase p are two different things. Now, you might want to consider yourself, uh, what would a person have to do in order to be seen as powerful? Now, your first concept might be that they can be able to lift something very heavily. And that does, uh, that is definitely a factor of something that is powerful. The more powerful something is, the more something can lift objects and move objects and apply forces. In a scientific case or in a physical case, we would say that it's their ability to do work. So the more force and uh, uh, that they can exert and the more things that they can lift up, the more work they're capable of doing. So. Being able to do work is definitely one aspect of power. But another thing that's important to think about is a case like this. Would you consider a person who's able to lift a car within 10 hours more powerful than a person who lifts a car, uh, the same exact car, in only 5 seconds? Obviously no. The time it takes to do that is also a factor. So it's not just uh, how much weight you can move, it's how fast you can move it. So uh, that's going to be the two aspects that we're going to look at. The amount of work that, that's done and the amount of time it takes to complete that work. So the equation, or the, the official scientific definition, is the rate at which work is done. Now, just to clarify, anytime you see the word rate at which something is done, or the rate of something, that usually means that you're dividing it by time. So power is going to be defined by the equation work divided by time, because that's the rate of time, uh, the, uh, sorry, the rate of work being done. So the more work you do and the quicker you do it, that is what's going to dictate how much power you have. Now, the standard units in this course for power is going to be the watt, W-A-T-T, -T, uh, with the unit being a capital W. Uh, you might also have heard of the other unit, the unit that is more commonly used in uh, America, which is the horsepower. Uh, that's another unit that uh, you could use. But for the most part, uh, we're mainly going to work about watts. Now, watts is another derived unit. Uh, if we look at the equation right here, work is measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds. So watts is just joules divided by seconds. So either of these units works as a unit of power. Just want to clarify that. Also, do not get the unit mixed up with uh, the symbol. The symbol for W is work. The unit W is watts. A good example of that is in the equation F net equals MA. We all know that M here stands for mass. But if I tell you that something is 4M, you would recognize that this is a distance and that this stands for meters. So just like in a case like this where uh, M can be the unit for meter or the symbol for mass, here W can be the unit for watt or the symbol for work. And they are not the same. A big common mistake that I see people do is they'll see a question that says something is 5 watts of power and then in the equation they'll put it in for W because they'll think, oh, this has a W that's a W, let's put it together. Don't do that. Watts goes for power. Now there's other equations that we have for power and if you look on the reference table you'll see them. A lot of this comes from the fact of work having other things that we could plug into it. So for example, work is force times distance. So that means one of the other equations we have is FD over T. 
because that's what work is. Now another one that you might not have seen right away is the fact that the velocity is distance over time. So in the equation that we have here, once we plug FD over T, uh, FD into the power equation, we end up seeing that we have D divided by T. So what we end up seeing is that we have power equals work divided by time, power equals FD over T, and power equals F times the average speed. Just like with the, mom uh, the impulse equation from the momentum topic, you choose which of these three you're going to be looking at based off of what they're giving you. So if they're giving you something with force and velocity, obviously you'd use the third part. If they're using uh, something with uh, work and energy, you would use the first part. All right, uh, And that's pretty much it. So um, we'll end up doing some practice questions in a second. Oh, one last thing to talk about is that uh, recall the concept of conservation of energy that uh, any change in the energy can be replaced with work because that's the definition of work it's a change in energy so for example if you know how much the kinetic energy changes by you could plug that in for work if you know how much the potential energy changes by that also can be plugged in for work essentially what I'm trying to get at is that work is just a stand-in term for energy so if you know what energy is, put that in, and chances are you'll end up getting the power right. All right, so here's the first question. Pause the video work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right, so to find out the work, uh, we use the power equation. This is my power. This is my time. So plug it into the equation, and we get it 60,000 joules. Easy peasy. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself, and we'll go over it in a second. All right, so we have a force, we have a mass, we have a time, we have a distance, and we have the power. So of the equations, we would use FD over T. So the force uh, that's given to us is the 300 newtons. The distance is 6, the time is 20 plug and chug and we get 90 watts. Alright, here's the next question. Pause the video work itself and we'll go over in a second. Alright, uh, so here now we're looking for the maximum distance. So using once again the FD over T equation, we use 60 in for the power. The force is going to be the 90 newtons. Uh, because we're lifting it up, we have to counterbalance the weight of the object. So we have to exert the same amount of force lifting it up. Uh, and we do it in 7.5 seconds. Solve, and we get that the distance is 5 meters. Here's the next question. Pause the video, work myself, and we'll go over in a second. Now, if you notice, this is essentially the exact same question, except instead of telling us the weight of the object, we tell you what the mass of the object is. So we're still using the same equation, except this time, instead of using a force, because they didn't give us a force, what we have to do is calculate the force using Fg equals mg. Remember, if you're given the mass of something, we automatically know the force of it as well. The mass is 5, the force is going to be 50. So uh, remember that. Try not to confuse it and think that it's a conversion. We're not. We're still calculating the weight. Weight and mass are two different things. Uh, but once we do that, plug the numbers in, we end up getting that it's 4.16 meters. So that would be the maximum height. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself and we'll go over in a second. All right. So uh, for this, same, same idea. Uh, we want the power. Uh, we do the exact same thing. Uh, we have the mass. We calculate the force by multiplying it by 10 or uh, the value of g, 9.8 meters per second squared. Plug all the other numbers in, and we get that the power is 1.47 watts. Here's the next one. Pause the video work itself. We'll go over in a second. All right. Same thing. Again, you should notice that it, this ends up happening a lot. Uh, very repetitive, which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of going through this as quickly as I can. Pause video, work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right, 
so slightly different this time uh, they give us the speed so instead of using FD over T we're going to use FV so my force once again is taken by taking the mass and multiplying it by 9.8 I plug in the speed that they give me and I get the power is a little bit under 80,000 watts All right. the last thing that I want to talk about is graphs so uh, if you have a graph of work versus time how would we find the power well if you go back to what I said before we have two choices, slope or area. Slope is essentially using division, and area is using multiplication. Well, power is work divided by time. You're dividing the y and the x-axis, so that means I'm going to have to use slope. So taking the slope of this graph is what's going to give us the power. So here should be the last question. Pause the video by yourself. We'll go over in a second. All right. So they want us uh, the power at 1.5 seconds, at 3 seconds, and at 6 seconds. Now, since this is a linear line, we know that the slope should be the same. So if we use the numbers to do the slope, uh, each of these, by the way, is doing minus 0 for the 0, 0 point. We end up getting 267, 267. 267. So yes, it all makes sense. The slope is constant. And that's it. Uh, like I said, it's a very basic, straightforward one. It's a plug and chug. Uh, all you need to know is the different equations to use. I think the trickiest part would probably be the idea that you don't have to look for the explicit word of work. It could just be change in kinetic energy, change in potential, anything like that can be plugged in to replace for the work. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, good luck. See you later. Have a great day.